This is bad. I thought you was going to like... Uh... Grill you? No, I thought it was going to be like... I was going to have that. I was going to be up in this bitch sweating like... That's the misconception. I swear to God, I went with them hoes. I swear to God. That's the misconception no. of therapy that most people have. The decision on going to the military? Yes. Desperation. Okay. I was in the streets. I had kids. I was um, doing this, that, and the third. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was basically what kids rap about today. I was, like, really doing. You know? Mm -hmm. I, um... And it's funny, man, every time I talk about that, I go back to the one situation that I had told you about before. We've had a couple of conversations before, so give me a break. Um, I go back to the situation of selling the, the, the older couple in the front seat, the crack, and the babies was in the back. It was, it was winter time. It's cold in a bitch. It's winter time. I sell them a crack. I look in the back seat. It's like four or five kids, man, just jumping them around on the back seat in their own world. And today I be thinking, like, I wonder where them fucking kids is at. Because this was 20 some years ago. These kids grown. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it altered your decision to keep doing that? Um, no. Because I went to the military, I ain't really had shit going on, you know. I was in, I knew if I stayed here, that I was probably, I probably went to jail for something stupid. You know what I'm saying? I don't went to jail for something stupid. I would have, um, <laughs> I would have way more kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're grateful that you went to the military. Thank you for your service. Don't ever thank nobody for, like, I mean, I, it, like, people, I did that shit out of desperation. You know what I'm saying? I do. Nobody want to gamble with their life for some other nigga, and you paying me pittance? It was, what they was paying me was nothing of what I was making selling crack. This is what it is. You know what I'm saying? They paid me a lot. Did you find any structure while in the military? Man, I got my whole shit together in there. You know what I'm saying? Luckily, for, like, I met some good people. Uh, I didn't really like my job. You know, and that's probably one, that's the reason I didn't stay in. Is because I, <laughs> all the shit that I went through, all this, that, and the third, I go take the ASVAB test. And what they say? You a cop. I said, man, I don't want to be no cop. I need to be a medic. I want to be a doctor. You know what I'm saying? Could it have been karma that they made you a cop? Being that you were? It was karma. It was. Yeah, yeah. Karma's a motherfucker, bro. The universe is telling you you need to straighten up. Man, the universe will straighten your ass up real quick. You don't even have to worry about that. So within all of that, selling drugs, going to the military, what is your true passion? It's always been uh, my whole... Growing through, it's always been writing and uh, music. Um, uh, art. I paint it. I've always written music, you know, as of late I've been, you know, doing my thing on the other side of the camera, on both sides of the camera, really. I think I was put here to, there's, I always tell, uh, I always say, 
there's something in me that like something was put in me by the universe. And that shit gotta come out, man. It's like a story or I don't know really know what it is, but it's fucking huge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit gotta come out. And you're still working on that. I mean it, it I just know that it's there. It's going to materialize itself. I really don't have no choice in the matter. It's almost like I don't I didn't have no Almost like you didn't choose whether to be a boy or a girl. Same thing. I really don't have no choice in the matter. I just know that it's there. Mm -hmm. And before I go, it will, you know what I'm saying? When did you find out you were so creative? Man, I... In my room as a kid, by myself. What age? Man, I had a, my first drum set. We wasn't even at Shaker Street yet. We were still down on Buckeye. Um, I had a, uh, what's that nigga name from the Muppets that played the drums? Fozzie. Fozzie. I'm about to change my rap name to Fozzie. <laughs> um, that's a dope name. Okay. I think it was Fozzie that played the drums. We'll, I will have to look that we'll up. Look that up. Yeah. Um, I got my first drum set. I was probably two or three. And I started reading that. Um, you started reading at what? Like two and a half, three years old. You know what I'm saying? So you were advanced. That's what they say, but I just always thought I, I, I'm i regular. Animal. What? Animal. Yeah, I had an animal drum set. Yeah, animal. Sure was. He had the shit stick. He had the afro and all that shit. Yeah. That was shout out to Animal, man. That was my favorite. Uh, them and the chef. You remember the chef? <laughs> Sturdy birdie. Yeah, that was my dude, too. Huh? The chef and the two niggas, the haters. <laughs> the two niggas that sat up there. The you had to love them because they, if you was a, a fun-loving child, they were the opposite of you. Meaning they were the same. They were showing you your other side. Grumpy yeah. old men. Yeah, two grumpy old ass men. You are a vibrant young child. You get it as a kid. I got it. To watch it now, it really means nothing because we move. We're in between that. Uh, I was a child and grumpy old man. You know what I'm saying? So to watch it now, you kind of it kind of loses its. But you can, I remember watching it as a child. Like that was one of my favorite shows. Jim Hansen, shout like Jim Hansen. Oh my God, man, this dude. Jim Hansen is a a lot of most people don't know that about me. What is that? I'm a Jim Hansen fan. Oh. Henson, Hansen, Hansen, Jim ha Henson, Henson. Henson, Hanson, sorry, sir, if I butchered your name. Yeah. Um, I'm a huge uh, Basquiat fan, you know. So you like painting? I love visual arts. Yeah, visual arts is... When's the last time that you painted? Early 2000s. Is that something that you <coughs> do as a therapeutic mechanism? That I did? Yes. <coughs> mm -hmm. That's a good question. Ask it again. <laughs> Is that something you did as a therapeutic mechanism? Art? Yes. Was it an escape from something? No. If I don't have, okay, so they say pressure bus pipes. 
and I'm like a sponge and I absorb everything. I go to these places, I absorb energy from all these people. I go to the store and I absorb all the energy from all of the, the products that are in there. And You needed a release. Yeah, and that shit has to be released. You know what I'm saying? I hang with Pooh and them. And yeah, and you have to release. So it's like if, you, if I don't, I become irritated and all of the things, it's really more like an addiction. But you said you haven't done it since early 2000. What Not painting, painting. So creation. You, like okay. this is my version of painting now, okay. yeah, visual art. So I'm fine with it as long as there is it's some like type creative. of relief. For, for a period, me and Pooh just wrote and recorded, okay. you know? Do you think you'll go back to painting? <clears throat> I don't know. It hasn't struck me yet. You know what I'm saying? But it was like far more than painting, man. I was more of sculpting with pain and uh, I was making like, I was still making dioramas. I was collecting shit from, you know what a diorama is? I was collecting shit from people in the streets and I would come home and I would have all of these eyes and ends, earring backs and uh, <laughs> other shit. <laughs> and I would have... <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> I don't think as a therapist you're supposed to be laughing. I'm sorry. I think you're supposed to be keeping your composure. I'm trying. Who's me. in the therapy over here? I'm sorry. Right, Forgive okay. me. It's all right. Um, because I do know you, I know a little bit about your history. I do know that you. Nigga, you don't know me. I do know you had a art presentation. Yeah, that was a um, while back. And how did you come to do that? I was high. It was that was a whole different time in my life, and like everything was fueled by cocaine, and it was just different. Like everything was fueled by cocaine. Um, everything. Oh, it was. Oh, bitch. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't rolled a joint in a minute. So, you like to write, create music? Um, yeah. I mean, anything that's creative, man, if I'm involved in a creative process, I can go to sleep at night and be like, okay, you know, I did something with my life, you know? So you have tons of ideas <clears throat> and... Always. Like, I wake up in the morning and my mind is just going, going, going. But the killing part is I haven't watched no TV. I don't watch TV. I don't watch sports. Why? I don't. Why don't I do those things? Yeah. I don't have time. They're bad for us, man. Like. TV is bad for us. And I'll tell you why. Flicker rates. On these new TVs, 
I was about to say something else, but I'll go with flicker rates because this is also part of the problem. So, have, you know, like people who have seizures, you can't put a strobe light in front of them, right? Correct. Well, there's other, there's a certain rate that a light can blink that'll cause that seizure in the human brain, correct? Yes. You would probably know better than me. Yes. All right. So, by changing the pattern or the way the light is blinking, can I also get you to think other things? It can be a form of mind control. I, I didn't say it, you did. <laughs> Those were your words. What, you, what did you say, a form of what? Mind control. There you go. The advertisement. I don't watch TV because I don't want my mind control. This isn't bad. I thought you was going to like, uh... Grill you? No, I thought it was going to be like, I was going to have that. I was going to be up in this bitch swim like. <laughs> I, I swear to God, I went with them hoes. I swear to God. That's the misconception no. of therapy that most people have. Yeah. So if therapy is just two motherfuckers talking, yes. why is it considered so bad? People are afraid of the unknown. They have a misconception that a therapist is going to tell them what to do, how to think. A therapist's job is to listen, to find the root of whatever problem you might be having, if one at all. Right. So how many problems from this initial consultation would you say I have? <laughs> there are some things I'd like to address further more in depth. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold up. I'm a good dude. What you mean you want to discuss this further? Yes, I need to have more clarification on some background oh. that you mentioned. Um, All right, well. And you discussed your parents not being present at games. Let's, let's. Let's let's do that on the next episode, y'all. You know, if y'all like this shit, I'm actually enjoying it. Hopefully, y'all enjoying watching. If not, you know, whatever. But it's OHX Chronic Therapy. Like, comment, subscribe.